So this will be our first example of a related rates word problem. Okay. So let's read the problem carefully first. Air is being released from a spherical balloon so that the volume is decreasing at a rate of 50 centimeter, cubic centimeters per second. How fast is the radius of the balloon decreasing when the diameter is 30 centimeters in length? In this problem, you know, it's pretty straightforward uh, what's happening. We have a balloon and the balloon is being deflated. Okay, so the balloon is getting uh, smaller and smaller. Okay, and <clears throat> you can see that um, the, obviously when the balloon gets smaller, um, the volume is going to decrease. Um, we can also see that as the balloon gets smaller, the radius and the diameter uh, will also decrease. So these are also uh, quantities that are changing with res respect to time. R is getting smaller. Uh, equivalently, the diameter, um, if we look all the way across, that's also uh, decreasing as the balloon gets smaller. So the first step I recommend when approaching related rates problems is that you read the problem very carefully as many times as it takes. Um, take, really take your time in this step and then draw any diagrams that you think might help you answer the question. So even though we've already read the question, I'm going to just read it uh, another time a little more carefully. Um, and point out some um, some things for you. So, <clears throat> okay, air is being released from a spherical balloon so that the volume is decreasing at a rate of 50 centimeters cubed per second. So this is a key word here. A rate, rate is another word for derivative. And we can also see that we have a quotient here. We have cubic centimeters over seconds. Okay, so that's another way you can see that this is a rate. Um, then it asks us, how fast is the radius of the balloon decreasing when the diameter is 30 centimeters? So the, this is also kind of a tip off that you're being asked for a rate, like how fast something is decreasing or increasing. Um, in this case, we want to know how fast the radius of the balloon is decreasing when the diameter is 30 centimeters. And equivalently, that's when the radius is 15 centimeters. Okay, and here's a little diagram of my uh, balloon. <clears throat> the second step I would recommend is that you um, ask yourself what variables change with respect to time. Okay, and in this case, I'm going to let uh, t be equal to the time in seconds. And I'm going to also note that volume was mentioned here. So I'm going to let V of T be equal to the volume of the sphere or the balloon, the spherical balloon at time T. And another thing that me that's mentioned here is the radius. So I'm going to let R of T be equal to the radius of the balloon at time T. Oh, we could also add the diameter here since it is mentioned, but the diameter is just going to be twice the radius. Um, we could also look for many other types of quantities such as, um, you know, the surface area, um, you know, things like that. But those aren't, don't seem to be relevant to the problem. So for now, I'm going to leave them out and add them later if we need them. Um, okay, so after you've uh, named sort of the variables and the quantities that are changing with respect to time, I would next um, recommend rereading the problem and answering the question, um, what rates, so remember rates are derivatives, so what rates are given? And then what rates are we being asked for, so are unknown? Okay, so in this case, what rates are given? Well, if I reread the question, air is being released from a spherical balloon so that the volume is decreasing at a rate of 50 cent cubic centimeters per second. 
So I'm going to write that down. Um, so that is the volume that is changing. So dV dt, the, the change in the volume with respect to time is given. At, and we see a 50 cubic centimeter per second, but it's saying it's decreasing at that rate. So that's negative 50 uh, cubic centimeters per second. So then it asks us, how fast is the radius of the balloon decreasing when the diameter is 30 centimeters? So it's basically asking us, what is the, the, chain, the rate of change of the radius with respect to time? That's unknown, but at the specific point in time, when the diameter is equal to 30 centimeters. And remember that the diameter is 30 centimeters. That's basically the same as saying that the radius is 15 centimeters. Okay, so the question is, how, what is, what is the trick here? How, if I know that the volume is decreasing um, at this rate, how am I going to use that to figure out um, the rate at which the radius is decreasing? So the idea behind related rates problems is that these rates are related. So since the volume as a quantity is related to the radius, and then you can see that that's true, right? As the volume gets smaller, the radius also gets smaller. So these quantities are related in some way. Therefore, their derivatives should also be related. So how are we going to find that relationship? Well, in step four, uh, what we're going to do is we are going to find a relationship between our quantities, right? So the um, Okay, so we want to find a relationship. And this is a pretty far, straightforward relationship. It's just a geometric formula. The volume of a sphere, we know, is given by 4 thirds pi r cubed. And just to remind you that, you know, our, our sphere is actually changing and the volume is actually changing. So I'm just going to write um, that the relationship here that we have is I'm going to write with uh, in function notation v of t is equal to 4 thirds pi times the radius at time t cubed. Okay, so that is a relationship between the volume and the radius at any time t. So in order to find the relationship between the rates, all I have to do is differentiate both sides of this equa equation. So differentiate with respect to time. So I'm not going to differ be differentiating with respect to uh, r or v, but I'm respect differentiating with respect to time, and I'm going to have to use implicit differentiation. And often we'll also need to use the chain rule. So let's carry out this derivative. So I have a d dt of the left-hand side and then I'm going to take the derivative of the right-hand side. Okay, and this will give me, uh, on the left-hand side, this is just dv tt, dt. It's just taking saying take the derivative with respect to time. On the right-hand side, so I can pull out the uh, constant multiple here, um, and I have... Uh, 4 thirds pi, and then what is the derivative? And this is the part that's a little bit tricky. Um, what is the derivative of the radius cubed with respect to t? I'm using implicit differentiation as well as the chain rule. So in this case, this would be equal to 3 times r of t squared times the derivative of r with respect to t. Okay, so that is the chain rule right there. And then let's uh, clean that up a little bit. So we have dv dt is equal to 4 pi times r of t squared times dr dt. So once you get used to this, 
um, you can actually use a simpler notation to write these derivatives. You just have to remember that v is a function of t, r is a function of t, and you're differentiating with respect to t. So I'll, I'll show you the shorthand here how I would normally uh, write out this calculation. Um, so normally I would just write, um, I would go from my geometric formula and I would just write um, the derivative of the left-hand side is equal to the derivative of the right-hand side. And then I would just uh, write v prime is equal to 4 thirds pi times 3r squared times r prime. Okay, But you have to remember that r is a function of t. Um, then I would simplify and I, ha I would have 4 pi um, r squared times r prime. And you're totally welcome to do this. It's just that you have to remember um, to use the chain rule here because um, this is, we are differentiating with respect to, to t, not r. So finally here we can see that the rate of change of the volume it is related to the rate of change of the radius. Um, it's just a multiple of 4 pi r squared. So r squared is varying. Uh, we can also solve this for r prime. Uh, and then we would get r prime is equal to v prime over 4 pi r squared. So although the volume is constant, we can actually see looking at this guy that the rate of change of the radius is actually not constant, right? Because it depends on r, and we know that r is changing. Um, in other words, as r gets smaller, uh, the rate of change is going to grow in magnitude. It's going to be negative, but it's going to grow in magnitude. Okay, so let's finish the problem. Um, there's a couple ways you could do it. So in our case, we know that the rate of change of the volume is negative 50. Um, and these are just constants, 4 and pi. Um, we know that the, well, the if the diameter is 30 centimeters, we know that the radius is 15 centimeters. So we actually know r. And the only thing we don't know is the thing that we're looking for. So this is definitely um, one way to proceed. And here we would have 900 pi times r prime. And so we get that uh, r prime is negative 50 over 900 pi, which you can reduce. And this is how I would enter it into uh, WebAssign. Uh, or, or actually, that's actually not how I would, would rec enter it in WebAssign. Um, so here's another thing to be careful about. Uh, when you write your final answer, um, we're going to write that the, um, the radius is decreasing at a rate of um, 5 over 90 pi uh, centimeters per second when the diameter is 30 centimeters. So one quick thing I wanted to point out is notice how since I have decreasing here, it's decreasing at a rate, I don't need the negative sign in front of um, 5 divided by 90 pi. So you're going to leave this off because basically that's what this is telling us. It's decreasing at a rate. Uh, it would be redundant to have them both. So make sure that when you enter your answers, you enter this uh, the positive um, in this case, 5 divided by 90 pi. Okay, so one other way that um, students might proceed solving this problem is that instead of just plugging the numbers in, you could solve for, for r prime here. You could say r prime is equal to v prime over 4 pi r squared. And then you would just proceed to fill in the known quantities. So 4 pi over 15 squared. And our final answer would be the same, negative 5 over 90 uh, pi.